Laurie Rulin is an Adobe certified instructor in both InDesign and Illustrator and a freelance graphic designer creating brochures, catalogs, menus, logos, infographics, and digital documents for a variety of clients. From her diverse graphic design freelance work, Lori brings a wealth of real world knowledge into her training. She's taught InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop at a number of training centers in Chicago for over 20 years, trains and consults for many corporations, SMPS Chicago, for example, and has presented at Adobe user groups around the country. She has been a, a speaker at Creative Pro Week, a favorite speaker at Creative Pro Week for the last six years. Lori, take it away. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome. I see a couple familiar faces here. I'm excited to talk to you guys about my take on interactivity with InDesign. And I'm going to start jumping into InDesign and how you're going to create some of the animations, the buttons, and things that we're going to use to make our documents look cool and make them digital. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. In, um, but the first thing I'm going to set up here is I'm going to make a digital workspace. So you've got the directions here. So I'll just move that out. And let me open up just a, I think I'll just do a quick new file here. And the first thing is the workspace. So just like with everything, you need a new tool set or you need to have your tools ready to go. You know, back in the day, we always used to use our X-Acto knives and our T-squares. We'd ha we had those tools. Now we're switching over to the digital tools. Um, same thing with InDesign. You may be used to working with a workspace, for example, the advanced workspace where you have your layers, your uh, uh, paragraph styles, and all these panels over here. There is already ready for you in InDesign a digital publishing workspace. So you're going to just click on this digital publishing workspace, and that's going to switch everything over. The other thing that I'll do is I'll drag in away a few of these panels, but there's one that is really missing. And that one that is missing is this one here called the EPUB Interactivity Preview Panel. So I'm gonna to go to my window interactive and open up EPUB Interactivity Preview. And I'm gonna tuck this one way up here at the top. See, I'm waiting for that little blue line to show up. And this little EPUB Interactivity Preview Panel, it's very long to say, uh, we're gonna use over and over again to just test how some of these animations and buttons are going to work just to make sure that they're good before I spend the time exporting them. So right out of the gate, you'll see that nothing shows up. No animation begins when I first show this page. I have a little direction button at the bottom that says click here to start the animation. And obviously the, you know, you can say, check out our, you know, yearly profits or something. You can get some, some creative uh, words here. So I'm gonna click here to start the animation. And what's gonna happen? is these little bars are going to grow upwards. And once they go to the top, then the information is gonna show up at the top of the screen, okay? Kind of a neat way to show off your data. See, I was talking with somebody a little bit earlier and they were saying that they're doing, you know, it sounded like some sort of an annual report. A lot more fun to look at the data this way than it is in a stagnant just table. So let me show you how we can set something like this up. So again, I'm going to go to my page that has uh, the page uh, with just the elements on it. And here's a cool trick. It's actually, I think I left it in the PDF. I did. So I, le I left this in the PDF. I love showing this trick. Create a bar graph that grows from the bottom up. Um, but I talk here to do, here it is, number three. I talk about setting up these numbers at an exact percentage height. So a lot of people say, well, how do I get the actual percentages to work in uh, for my objects? Well, I'll just draw the shape that let's say that's gonna be 100%. And I'll come up here to my uh, reference point and I'll choose the bottom middle reference point. And the height, whatever that number is, I'll just do a times 0.70%. And I gotta type in my percentage sign here and hit, return that didn't work the way I wanted it times. Uh, oh, I guess it's just times 0. 0.70. There it is. That's what I'm, I, I put the percentage, which I didn't have to. And that is now 70% of the hundred percent size. So I should have copied this, but let me, 
I'll do it again. I'll pretend that I know that that's 100%. And again, with the height oh, down here, I can do times 0.30, let's say, and hit return. And there is now a 30 for the height of my, uh, my, my chart. So that's how you can get your charts to make them actual numbers. All right, so that was a separate little tip here. So now let's make this column grow. And this is a little bit weird. So I do have the directions here and I've got a couple of things highlighted to make sure that you do this correctly. All right, here's how we make a column grow. The first thing, we're gonna select the column, go to animation. It is a very good idea to name this. I've gone ahead and named these, um, named these objects and just a, a side note, if you do name them in your layers panel, that name, when you turn it into an animated object, will automatically show up. So you can kind of use the layers panel and the animation panel together. Okay, so I've got it selected. I want to come down to my preset and just choose a preset. And it doesn't really matter what it is. And then I'll come over to my little uh, uh, reference point here. And I'll click that little bottom middle button because that's where I want the object to grow from. Then I'll go to my scale and I'll say the width is 100%, but I want this to be the height starting at zero. Now, remember the issue we ran into earlier about this animate from or to current appearance? This is just confusing. So let me just show what's going to happen here. So when I play this, did you see it snap? Let me do it again. It's confused. It, it starts and it gets bigger and it gets smaller. The problem here is it's needing to animate to the current appearance. So you want it to animate from, see these words here, animate from a height of zero from the reference point at the very bottom middle. And the width is still at 100%. And now let's try this, see what happens. And there, of course, it's not going to work. And there's one more thing I got to gotta mix. And the other problem here is that the opacity starts with from preset. You have to make sure the opacity is none. That's one of the reasons why that is not showing up. Let me hit play again. And finally, we've got this thing to get it to work. So I told you it's a little bit weird to make these little columns grow. There's a couple major, major things we have to, to set up. So let me do that again. I'll go to this one, go to animation, choose any random one of these, uh, probably not disappear, let me choose appear. And I want it to animate to the current appearance, what it looks like now. And I wanna animate it from the bottom, I've unchecked this, this link, so the, the constraint is unchecked, and the height is zero. And the opacity, I don't want it to fade in or fade out or anything. I just want it to show up and grow, so I choose none. And let me play this again. And there you see one and two are going to grow. Okay, so I can go ahead and select the next two here, choose my animation, and make this to appear. Then I'll choose to the current appearance. There's a lot of clicking here. I really wish that I could have a click monitor to figure out how many times I click with setting up some of these uh, animated documents because there's a lot. And there we go. So I can go ahead and that didn't work. Got to click away here uh, to the current appearance. None. Oh, I didn't set up my zeros. Okay, so there's one for that one. And there's a zero for this one. All right, let's test it. And now on page load, you see what's happening is each one of these bars is growing in turn because I did them, I animated them in the order uh, left to right. Now, let's go ahead and add this fading up here. So I've got this, the th four objects that I've got selected and I'll go here to animation. And I will say to fade in. And now we'll see what happens. So because animation does its thing in the order in which you select and apply it, you can see that I do the four bars and then I do the four circles. So if I wanted them to be the circle showing up after each one of the bars, I have to go to my timing panel. 
And this is where I'm just going to have to go through and readjust the locations of each one of my rectangles. So I've got a rectangle happening and then the truffle photo, the second rectangle, and then the cupcake photo, and so on. Now, I want to just show you how it would look if two of them would play together. So I'll do these two and play those together. And let's just take a look, sit back, the bar grows in the animation, and you can see I don't like them when they're set together. Sometimes I will and sometimes I won't. All right, so I'm going to take that off. So I'm going to go back here to timing, click on these, remove that so that they don't play together. Okay, so with animations, they automatically play on page load. But what's really cool is that you can set these animations up so that they play only when you tell them to play. So go in here and change my text. I changed my screen. So there we go. So I'm going to make this button real big. And I want these animations to play only when I press a button. So here's how I would do that. The first one that I want to play is this rectangle here. So there's there's two ways to do this. So I may do this one way and then I may undo and show you the show you the uh, actually no let me let me redo that. Let me show you the the Kind of the long way and then i'll show you the short way so i want to turn this button here into a button so that when i click on it the animation is the action that is performed so i select this button i go to my buttons and forms and i turn it into a button doesn't really matter the name then what i'll do is i'll act, add an action to this and the action that I want is an animation. So I'll click the animation. And then what is the animation? Well, it's the number one rectangle. And I want it to play. Now, I've got one more other thing that I have to do, but I'm going to set this up with a mistake. And at first, you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Why is this playing automatically? I thought we were setting that button up in order to have this happen. Well, we did. Watch, click. And it does play that animation every time I click the button. You know the problem? If I come back here to this rectangle, you will see that the event that the animation is going to happen on is on page load and the on release of that button. So that is probably one of the most frustrating things that I always have that always happens to me with, with creating animations is I forget to remove the on page load check mark. It comes on as a default. I never put it on. It comes on for every single object. So by turning that off now, as I play this, you can see that everything else will play. I have to press this button in order to get that animation to play. Okay, so let me back up a second. I'm going to undo that and undo and undo. So this now is no longer a button. So I'm back to square one. Here's another way I can do this. Um, and let me let me actually do this with something else. Um, with lack of something more creative to do, maybe I have a button that I want to press to make the title fly in. So let me quickly choose a lie in from top for this favorite chocolate dessert. Now, I don't want favorite chocolate dessert to happen until I click on something. So I'm going to turn off on page load. And now I have this button right over here. Let me read the tooltip. It says, create a button trigger. It says, click the icon and then click an object to trigger this animation. What this means is, I want this favorite chocolate dessert to fly in from the top when this button is pressed. So I can click this button here, move over and tell this title button to be a button, click, that will automatically play the animation of favorite chocolate dessert. That's a really cool little time saver. Let me play it, kind of ignore the rest of, the, the rest of this thing building. But if I click on this title, click, Favorite chocolate dessert will then fly in from the top. 
Okay, so that's another way that you can set up a button quickly to automatically play an animation. But what I want to do here is to set it up, click here to start the animation, and I'm going to go here to buttons, I'll turn it into a button, and I want it to play an animation. And I can actually stack up multiple animations, one after another. So you can see here, I'm going to choose, I think truffles is next, choose truffle, see I'm adding in more animations, and I want the second rectangle to play. I'll add in another animation, and this time I want the cupcake photo. I'll add in another one. See, there's a ton of clicks here, the third rectangle. I'll add in another one. This is now ice cream. This is a good reason why you name them. Almost done here. The fourth rectangle, and now the last moose photo. Okay. I have forgotten something, though. If I play this, it's going to play right away. And I don't want it to play right away. So I'm going to stop this. I have to tell all of these in my animations panel to not play on page load. So by turning that on page load off, now it will only listen to the release of this button at the bottom. All right, so let's test it out one last time. And there, nothing happens because I've told all eight of those items, or actually nine for the title, I've said, don't do anything until I press one of these buttons. So I'm going to press the title. The title will come in. Click here to start the animation. Click. And now you'll see that all four of those, actually eight of those animations are going to play one after another because I've set them all up in my buttons and forms panel one after the other. Okay. All right. So those two examples, there are so many other examples here that we can use to, um, to set up these animations, but those are just a couple, couple animation examples. Now, what I'm going to do here is just quickly um, export these page two. Uh, well, I'll just do that for interactive. And just click a quick export and look what nothing happens. So here's my PDF. Nothing's moving, nothing's happening. Um, I think I did the second, this first one without that title button here, but no animation is happening. So you absolutely cannot use any of this animation in a PDF. It'll only work in your publish online or your in five documents. Be sure to check out in five at in five.us. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.